what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live! I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live, there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using SOC accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by 10th Man, Bev Try Thinking, Righteous Force, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good morning, good morning. Hello. Morning. What up? Hey. Let's get straight into housekeeping. There's a couple of people in the wings waiting to go through a few little things. A lot little, but, you know, sizable, important, pertinent things that are on the horizon for us on this show. So let's get through housekeeping. Any signs of a physical geometric sphere edge, formerly known as Earth Curve? Not from your Kuiper. Nope. Yeah. Any signs nope. of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Only when no, I close not... my eyes and spin around. Of the Earth-based variety? Uh, no, then. How about the distance to the sun? Any evidence of the distance to the sun? I'll be Arwen. It's over there and no evidence for the distance. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? No evidence. Nope. Nope. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? Absolutely not. Impossible. Don't think so. So many people believe the sky is a vacuum. It's amazing. Any evidence of the R value? Earth radius. No evidence. Wow. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? I'm still waiting for the question to be answered, and they're running away from it, so no. Any scientific evidence of gravity? No such thing. Uh huh. No. Nope. Oh, here we go. George. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, guys. Uh, please uh, bear with me. I need to put my uh, my hat uh, my hat on uh, the uh, glow hat on. So um, yesterday I was um, debating with a few mates about uh, gravity. So we were using the analogy of dropping bowling ball from high buildings. Uh, how much to deviate or not, and the impact, the speed, all that. So we changed the analogy for watermelons and the impact of the watermelons. If we would be exactly the same. So I, um, something clicked on me and I said, voila, this is the, uh, the, uh, the um, scientific proof that we need for gravity. So I would like to put my, um, my observation through the uh, scientific test, if it's possible. Uh, I don't see any reason why not. If this has been formulated into the scientific method, then I'm all for it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the um, observed phenomena is when cracked open, all the watermelons are red inside. So natural phenomena inside of watermelon red. Okay. Well, the I... cause of that is gravity. So once the watermelon is exposed to gravity, it turns uh, red inside. And, and, and you've done this, right? You, you've, you've definitely proven that they are red inside when you crack them open, therefore <laughs> proving gravity, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to know the null? The null? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, sure. If what's a male in, in theory not exposed to gravity, it won't turn to red. I see. So if not, if no gravity, then it wouldn't be red. Exactly. And uh, this experiment you can perform underwater, on a vacuum, on top of a mountain, at sea level. So every time that you crack open a uh, watermelon and it's red inside is due to gravity. I see. And you can do this yourself, you say. You can prove this to yourself, this form of <laughs> Exactly, fighting. exactly. I mean, but uh, that's uh, the moral of the story is if you implement enough bullshit, people will believe it. And this is what the globals uh, are doing to us all the time. Perfect. So we've started with the premise that we have a gravity. Then we've formed a logical fallacy, affirming the consequence. If we have gravity, we're going to see red inside a watermelon. We do see red inside watermelons. <laughs> Therefore, gravity. They're not really scientific method, although nice, nice touch with the null. <laughs> if yeah, no, <laughs> it was the best that I could do, man. I'm sorry. That's okay. So Globers, maybe you'll say, Globers, maybe you'll say you have watermelon with yellow inside. Then no gravity. He's got a point there. Yeah. I've seen yellow watermelon. Well, maybe the watermelon can still be uh, proof for the molten iron core. But we've all seen the, the gravitational dispersion testicle. So obviously we can easily well, uh, explain that away with the amount that's going to affect the colour. So I can easily come up with a just-so story to explain that away. No problem at all. If my whole premise exactly. of my proof is I, a logical I'm sure fallacy... I'm sure there's plenty of people queuing to do math about this. If my whole premise to prove this is a logical fallacy, then I can make up any just-so story to justify any problems that might arise as a result of my initial just-so story begging the question form a logical fallacy. No problem. New just so story, no problem. I can rattle one off it, and it'll be true because I'll have made it up myself. In case people in the audience hadn't tweaked, that, that's definitely not a proof of gravity. It's just a demonstration or a juxtaposition of their claims and how they put forward their claim proof of gravity. So yeah, just a parody on that. Thank you very much, George. Excellent stuff. That concludes housekeeping. Cheers, man. I was oh, laughing nice. on my own two o'clock in the morning just with this thought. Absurd. Okay. So, Bev, yesterday, I didn't actually see this, but was debating Rumpus on... Well, you tell us, Bev. Sleeping Warrior. Did, where did I say? It was on Sleeping Warriors. That's what I said, isn't it? Didn't I say that? Yeah. Either way, Sleeping Sleep Warrior channel. Subscribe today to Sleeping Warrior on YouTube. Anyway, Bev, tell us all about what you did. Well, I've, I've um, developed a, a test that I say um, will <laughs> prove that water level is horizontal, right? Now, the fact that you have to prove that sort of thing is a bit ridiculous because that's what everybody knows, that level is horizontal, right? What? Horizontal means yeah, curved, yeah. doesn't it? This is well, news to me. It's a debate, isn't it? <laughs> Can horizontal be curved? Some of them like it. We developed bendizontal for that. Well, um, wouldn't that rather be circumdicular? <laughs> right, we can all <laughs> hold off the jokes. I've encouraged it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's just let Bev get his piece out. Sorry, Bev, my right. bad. So the, the whole point of this test is to prove that water level is horizontal. But, I mean, that's a known fact. So you end up getting tied up into a thing where they don't understand um, the basic principles of what, what what a water level is. So I've developed this um, thing. Can you get my camera? Is it if I switch my camera on? Let's check. I've got the screen on. Talking to me? I don't know. Yeah. Man, this not stop my camera. <laughs> yeah. so there. there we go. Right. Yeah, so you're up. You can get that. And that is that a good picture? Got your whiteboard. Ish. Very yeah, good. Yeah. Right. So I've got I've got a water level here. Right? It's just a tube. You fill with water and you put two things on it either end. Right? And the water level in between these two 
is always the same. It equalizes. So if I can do that, it'll, it'll equalize to itself. <clears throat> that, that's what a water level does. Now, the distance that you move them apart doesn't really matter. It's level, right? It's understood that that is level. And this tool will establish a horizontal plane of reference, right? So that's what this tool is. Basic, simple tool. Just You're going to have to speak up when you turn around because we can't hear you. Sorry. Move the mic over. Yeah, that's better. So we've got the, the water level, right? Now, if I move this along here, then it's, it'll equalize and it, it's level between these two points. And you keep going, you keep going, and it, it's, it's level, right? That's, that's what this tool does. Establishes a level. So we have this here. This is a drawing of these levels. You see that? Is that does that come through or is it a bit? Yeah, we, we need you drawing a level. Right. We've got you so far. Yeah, just just drawing this level. Now the horizontal plane that is established across there goes all the way across. Right like this. So got a level. That's that's a laser level. It's establishing a level line all the way across. Now that's what this does. The water level here is the same level but when the when the, when the ballers get involved then you, if you just put another piece in the middle here then when asking them what happens at this point if it's horizontal they'll all be at the same level right that this one here won't rise. It can't we, do because we, it's... We're with you. I don't know if you're asking rhetorically or not. That's why I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. No, no, no but that's okay. But it's... The, this. There's no scale that this... Uh, I'm aware of that this won't be horizontal. This basic tool and what the water does in... It, it will be horizontal, right? That's, I think that's where the, the ballers are getting um, mixed up, right? That, that that is what would happen. In, in reality, these levels here will all be the same. When you fill it up with water, you'd end up with that. Can you colour them in just so, it, just so it's a bit clearer? So, Perfect. Polish. But that that's a horizontal. Now you you need to check this, or the ballers say you you need to check this. Right? Now, how would you check that? Well you if you have a canal that's running at the side and you do this test at the canal. Then you just measure the height of that above the canal, and the height of that above the canal, and the height of that above the canal. They'll oh, all be the same. Second. Sorry to interrupt. There's, a, there's already a problem. What you're describing is a tool mm -hmm. to establish level. But yes. their fundamental begging the question premise would state that the tool, when showing level, is actually showing curved. So regardless of if you demonstrate this to them, they will just simply assert that what you're seeing in that depiction is actually a curve. That's all they'll do. Ah, well, see, this is the this is what initially what happened. I mean, I, I said level is a straight line. It's horizontal. It's a horizontal plane. Level is a straight line on a horizontal plane. And for that, I got accused of being a child abuser. So... I, I, the mission is to prove that level is horizontal. I mean, it, I, I don't have to prove it but, to anybody. Sorry, in the I, real I have world. to say it again. It's the other way round. The tool 
the water level you're describing would prove that the ground you're on is level so you could build on it for the sake of argument. That's what you would utilise so that you could do that job. So it's not yes. the other way around. It's not you proving the tool is capable of demonstrating no, 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 flat. The tool demonstrates that, that what you're on is flat. Just that the level is horizontal. It's practically used as horizontal. I mean, that was that was my only claim. And um, for that, I got accused of being a child abuser for, for teaching my son that level is horizontal. This is just can, the, the end game. I can, actually it. I can actually anticipate something that Globers will do. Um, and I think it would probably come from Zanuck. They would say that because the gravitational force across the uh, surface is, you know, going towards the center of the center mass, that actually that water would still be level, even though it would be curved. So the water would not, you know, it would. You don't know if you understand what I'm trying to trying to say. So no matter what you do, the argument would be that you would have level even over a curve because of the way the gravitational force would work. That's what they'll be arguing. And arguing. what's gravity if again? I, uh, hold on. Uh, I know. Hold on, chocolate. I know. I uh, hello, hello, chocolate. Good by the way, ball. yes, yes, Paul, correct. Now I know, and Paul knows that that force isn't in existence, chocolate. You're right, but that's what they'll still say, and I just want Bev to address it. So go ahead, okay. Bev. So if, you, if this is higher, or I mean, it's it's on the same level, at least now. That is a horizontal plane from there to there. This one isn't needed because the water level, the tool, you can just move this end to wherever you want. Here, here, ever, wherever, it doesn't matter. It will be the same level. So that's a straight line. Always, it's got to be. And then prove by this, these, these are two, imagine we've got two separate water levels. Now, all these levels are doing is checking the level here will be the same as the level here. So these independent water levels, the black ones, will check the level at the center. Now, the only way that this one could be a horizontal plane of reference and this one be a horizontal plane of reference and this one be a horizontal plane of reference would be if they were all on the same horizontal plane of reference otherwise how do you have one horizontal plane of reference another one another one you'd have five different horizontal planes of reference within Wait. the level we the only wouldn't. way this is possibly logically possible is with um, horizontal. Yeah, if it's flat. It's got to be, yeah. I mean, you, you addressed this, and recently Brian's logic also addressed this, that the surveyors, even the ones that are asserting the spherical Earth, have to work with that parameter holding true anyway. They're, they're working with Euclidean maths they're not working with global maths they're working on a tangent plane in other words this principle with a water level would hold true even in uh even in bullshit ball surveying because they use tangent yeah. plane so well uh, no surveyors use a horizontal level yeah but what i'm saying is once you've drawn if you're a ge geodetic surveyor and you're drawing a tangent point and then drawing out in uh, all directions from that tangent point a tangent plane even if you go to the very edge of that tangent plane it's it's all assumed on that plane to be flat with the same same zenith right at the very edge of it as it has in the center for the sake of their whatever work they're doing <laughs> anyway the point is that they're all working on a tangent plane therefore the water level will still present as level and still be a useful tool because of the way they're working on a flat plane in a given area after deriving their zenith and begging the question all of the then points as you move along the tangent plane that they're working on have the exact same zenith that was drawn from the center point of the tangent plane in other words you can still have parallel lines on their tangent plane and therefore water levels would be water levels because they are um, 
I yeah, see, but I... Nathan, the the point is, my point is that the 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 level, the top of that line is is what is level, not the terrain. The terrain can be can be round, could be oscillating, but it's the top line that is flat. So even if it was a ball, the uh, the uh, the top of those levels will continue level if in, the, in, in, in to the infinite. Yeah, you'd assume that you'd still have the principle of a level being used and it's still being sound, which it is, and it would show some drop below the level of the level. But we don't experience that. Well, you see, we're, we're talking about a water level here. Now, the people that I'm talking to imagine that there is a drop in that. There has to be, right? The, the surface that they live on, they think curves. So therefore, there's a must here. The water level must curve. Must do for them. Well, but yeah, no, it's a no. tool. Yeah, I understand that they assume that, but the problem with that assumption is that it doesn't. The water no. level would have to have something falling away beneath it if the Earth was a sphere, because the principle of a water level is always going to give you a level. That's its job. So therefore, to demonstrate curvature, it's not they're getting around the fact that they don't see any drop in the water level and in line with their nonsense of gravitational attraction, which doesn't exist. So they beg the question that it's bending even when it's showing level, rather than what should actually occur if they're to prove that the ground beneath your feet is curving away from you, which is to say that the ground would curve away beneath the level, not the level curve, because that's just inserting their fundamentalist presupposition that level is curved, which is absurd. Yeah, so, I mean, the the question is, how long can you make that tube on a water level? Because this test that we've got here, there's, there's no scale to it. So, how how long can you do that test for? As long as you like. Yeah, well, that would prove a horizontal level, wouldn't it? Well, you know, it, it, would it actually it, prove... Because a horizontal is level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is a keystone of... Of, of these principles that are being applied when you do geometry and this these cornerstones these axioms that's the word I was fishing for hold true <laughs> just, you don't have to prove the axiom it's based on that holds true but you I mean I know you have to because they say you have to but these are employed principles that hold true the fact that they denied yeah. them because it doesn't conform with their sphere belief is neither here nor there to me. I know you're still fighting that battle. I'm not decrying what you're doing, Bev, by the way. No, no, I'm not. I'm not fighting that battle. All I'm trying to do is to simplify this basic truth so it's understandable for everybody to understand. Now, the, the fact that these um, globe Earth believers um, have to fight this, it's not like a they um, can decide that, okay, yeah, level is horizontal. They, they can't. This is, this is a tool for every flat earther to understand that there is no way logically, geometrically, or practically these globe earth believers can make this horizontal line curve. It can't be done. The fact that they just... Um, call your names or say whatever it is um i don't know it's ridiculous they're gaslighting yeah to summarize bev level is not curved that's the antithesis of level mm -hmm. yeah okay anything more to add bev no that's it straight straight lines and curved lines are definitely separate things Yep, indeedy. Thank you very much, Bev. Anybody want to add anything to that from the... Uh, oh, just messed up my Discord server. Let's just refresh it. One second. Does anybody want to add anything to that from Discord? Uh, can I just say something? Of course you can. Go ahead, George. Well, uh, on, the, on that same on that same projection that we, we just seen there with that water level, what I what I was saying is that that top, it's always level. 
the bottom, the terrain, it doesn't matter if it's curved or concave, whatever it is, it's the top that we're talking about, that's uh, tangent line. But uh, again, um, on those ends, uh, once you have the top line leveled, on those ends, once it you do a, um, a, sh a straight angle, you have two plumb lines, and for them to be plumbed, they need to be equidistant from each other. So they are parallel, basically. But on, then, on their uh, rhetoric, they will meet in the center. So again, uh, they deny the geometry. Yeah, correct. Can you summarize that, Beb, in terms of parallel lines not converging? Um, <clears throat> perpendicular is uh, defined within Euclidean geometry as two straight lines um, at 90 degrees to each other. Now, um, vertical and horizontal are also defined as perpendiculars, which means there is a 90 degree angle between a vertical and a horizontal. Now, you could put a vertical anywhere you wanted on a horizontal line in reality and it would be perpendicular to that horizontal line in reality in globe that, world however yes in globe zenith. world only one horizontal per vertical only one and well, yeah, but you can have no a horizontal being parallel vertical. verticals. You can you can have one being the other. So if you're at the North Pole on the globe, the fantasy ball Earth, and you've got your zenith going straight up, right? Well, then ninety yeah. degrees to you is your horizon from your zenith. So yes. far, so good. Well, yes. <laughs> somebody on the side of the ball, <laughs> and say I don't know Hawaii or something, they're going to be their their horizontal is the same as your zenith. Well, it's not strictly because yes. you moved over slightly on the ball, but you know what I'm saying. It's it's uh, parallel to your zenith. Their horizontal is yes. is parallel to your zenith. <laughs> it's ludicrous. Yeah. yeah. Um, a better way of thinking of it is if you if we were both if I was at Ecuador and you were at the North Pole on their model, and we both walked along a horizontal line towards each other, we would meet at a square corner. Somewhere. Oh, it's in, just bonkers. I mean, George summarised it beautifully. That you drop a plumb line here, and you know full well that if you walk to the other side of your house and you drop a plumb line, those two things are going to run parallel. That's a, a building principle that must hold true for buildings yeah. to stay upright. And that principle holds true everywhere. However, the assumption that will be made by a geodesic surveyor is that you can drop that plumb line, and if you move over slightly one inch, the parallel line is gone. It's now moving yes. at an angle towards the centre of the Earth. The two are not running parallel anymore. One inch. Because they're, obviously you're moving your zenith along a curved, actually straight, but curved is straight in their world line. Yeah, it's, um, it's an imagined geometry because it doesn't fit and perpendiculars don't work on that particular geometric model that they imagine. You shouldn't have any. You shouldn't have yeah, any. There, there is they no be there. geometry. If we're on a globe, I drop a plumb line and I should move an inch and it should be different. And that should exaggerate the further you move over and it should be easily and demonstrably an issue that they've had to cope with when building buildings. Now, the fact that they've never, ever dealt with it, in fact, they do the complete opposite and reverse engineer flat into sphere only to translate it back into flat again is a testament to how bloody flat it is. They don't have to cope with any of these problems that aren't in existence. They have to translate their bullshit faith in ball earth back into a flat plane. Don't you know, Nathan, that buildings are a little bit wider at the top and narrow at the bottom because of the, the way the plumb bond works because of the gravity for rotational gravitational forces that's just uh, imaginary geometry that's ludicrous makes you it's ludicrous that. that's what they're saying though yeah. what they have to say. yeah the whole thing it's an imaginary it's all every little bit of what they say is imagined and it has to happen in that for them to continue the imaginary thing that they're imagining 
Well, I was watching a video on the curvature of space time the other or a couple days ago, and it's so funny that you know I was watching I think Brian's logic on that geodetic surveying, and it's almost that that video was running parallel with what Brian was saying, and basically what they're saying in that is, and I asked this to Danny T yesterday, and I didn't quite hear his answer because I was driving, but can the curve can a, a straight line be curved? And he said no, but in accordance with the uh, globe model and curvature of space time and this geodesics, straight lines are curved. They have to be. For it to work. No, no, no. That's the space that is curved. Yeah, you're you're thinking of a different. You're thinking of Einsteinian traveling yeah. along geodesics, aren't you? Now you've kind of transposed Euclidean into Einsteinian. Well, that's what they did, though. On, in the video, I, I can I can find it posted. They, I'll check it out. Took, I'll yeah. check it out. But that's yeah, yeah. no. It's that um, conceptual mathematical um, model that they have to have that um, allows them to do that sort of stuff. But that's not um, reality geometry. That it's uh... yeah, we're we're not working on the really is level when we're doing that. With, with Einsteinian yeah. mathematics. It's no longer on the really is level, i.e. it's not reality, it's just conceptual. Yeah, the, proof, the proofs within geometry come from Euclidean geometry, i.e. things like uh, Pythagoras' theorem. But that can be proved within geometry, not... That, that's Euclidean geometry proof. It doesn't apply... Yeah, you need right angles and horizontal and vertical lines and things like that. Things that we actually have in reality usefully so. Otherwise, as I say, buildings would have some problems which nobody's having to overcome because of a sphere Earth. Nobody's having to overcome these problems. In fact, as I say, they have to translate a tangent plane, an area that has flat surfaces, when they even assess it for its globiness. They don't, they just presuppose it's a sphere and then map out a tangent plane, a flat surface to work on. Yeah, can Some we can we show geometric the word considerations, tangent? you might say? But no, they just beg the question from Brian's check out Brian's presentation. It was very eye opening. Um I did, but no, yeah, they I, don't they, did, the yeah. geometric considerations are merely them begging the question and squaring yeah. their own circle and justifying why they're drawing out a flat plane to work on. Then they start working on a flat plane. The very fact that you say tangent, though, you, you are reifying that circle that they have underneath that horizontal line, you know, just by the fact that you're calling it a tangent. I mean, because they, <laughs> they imagine on their fictional geometry that every tangent is a horizontal, which is ridiculous. But that, you know, like uh, the uh, very uh, fact uh, that when uh, you say tangent... Not anymore. Not no. anymore. Not at trench level. Black Swan. Well, if if the water level just, is horizontal, hold on. Just repeat then... that, Bev. It's, I might have gone past some of the. I don't want that to whistle over people's heads. They assume what about tangents now, Bev? Well, a a tangent is horizontal. Every tangent. I don't know whether they imagine every tangent on a circle or just when they imagine their. Um, geometric model of the earth oh really tangent. You, you, you are under the impression that they think tangents are straight as required in geometry is that is that what you're under the assumption because that's how their model actually works even though it's broken and busted and doesn't have a geometric horizon to draw a tangent to you're under the impression that they have straight tangents not well go on yeah, they, yeah they, a tangent has to be straight. They, that's one of the... Uh, no, 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 that's not what I asked. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I know a tangent must be straight. That's what a tangent is. But you're under the impression that they've got straight tangents, a necessity to be a tangent. I, I just want to correct you on that, Bev. It's been drawn out long enough. <laughs> no, no, they've, they've now got donkey dick tangents, bent tangents, mm. non-tangents. Did you not know this? Well, it, I've never heard of a, a bendy tangent. I've heard of a bendy zontal. Like, is that like? Do they assume that the tangent that bends is a horizontal that also bends with it? Yeah, bendy zontal. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a distant cousin of bendy zontal. Very distant cousin. 
The donkey dick horizon <laughs> is the distant donkey cousin of the, the bendy's on tour. <laughs> Bev, Bev, if I'm not mistaken, on yesterday's uh, back and forth with Rumpus, he kept saying the observer on the other location on the presupposed sphere, and I'm going to add this just for clarity and correct me if I'm wrong, is standing on one of those disco mirror ball flat horizontal surfaces, and his distance between where he's at to the center of the earth is the same as where you are miles and miles away so that's why to him it's horizontal and level no matter what or where you are on this sphere with disco squares it's the tangent works isn't that what he was trying to say i, I think so yeah but i mean if you if you go into the geometry line when these um, people do actually go down this geometry line and you they eventually end up at spherical geometry because that sounds appealing to them but the problem that they have when they go that far is that a spherical geometry is the geometry of the two-dimensional surface of a sphere and i don't know if you're aware of the fact that two-dimensional surfaces are um, I call them a plane, and uh, so again, they imagine curves everywhere. All right, so you're saying silent. you need to apply Euclidean principles to apply spherical geometry. If you were actually dealing with a beach ball and you wanted to do some geometry on it, you'd still need Euclidean principles to hold true. And you'd have to draw out planes like they do with their tangent planes, shockingly. Yeah, you'd need a Euclidean sphere um, geometry in order to base your framework of spherical geometry around. But once you started doing spherical geometry, that is the geometry of a two dimensional surface of a sphere. Fantastic, isn't it? You can check it out on Wikipedia if you want. Spherical geometry. Also interesting. Uh, doing... I least... Go on. Sorry, whoever that was. I listened, Go ahead. I listened yesterday that show, and I don't know if you noticed that Rumpus in one moment said like this because you were you were making presentation about level, and he said, "Why are you doing this on the on the board? Because in reality, it's curved." Yeah, they just make the question. Yeah, demand imagined. that you beg the question yeah. with them. Yeah, 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 but he said something like, "Why are doing this on the board?" He said something like, a, "Like all flat earth are saying something like it's observably flat." You know, he's something saying it's observably curved. You know, <laughs> why are you doing that on the board? What's that? You know, because in reality it's curved. <laughs> he's believing that. Well, I wanted to jump through just the looking. chat, strangle rumpus. Okay. So, you want to do what, Neil? I wanted to jump through the chat, the chat, and strangle rumpus. What? You you want to jump to the chat? Shout out to Unicorn Laser Eyes. He says, Sean Hawkins in chat thinks maps are plotted out curvy. <laughs> the ma maps are flat. Yeah, all maps are flat. <laughs> yeah pick up a globe you know, and you it'll say it's a toy point? on the bottom it'll say not for educational purposes on the bottom it won't say useful map on it national geographic say key stage one and two for the uh educational <laughs> use of a globe it's, what, five and six yeah when you're very susceptible to having indoctrinated religious beliefs plumped into your mind in thick and fast manner only to be completely ignored from then on in in your education and just the educational having the presupposition of a sphere earth hold true in all other areas without it having to be educated again yeah not me though um yeah that um model that that they use i mean maps um no, I mean, it, it, they keep saying that no maps are accurate. But, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the Ordnance Survey 
it'd be a bit miffed if you were to say that to them. Well, it's a very small a, section, isn't it? If you've got an ordnance survey map, I mean, you might get an ordnance survey map that's the whole of England and Northern Ireland, for the sake of argument, or, or the UK. But you wouldn't necessarily get an ordnance survey that could squeeze the whole of Great Britain and Ireland on it, could you? Well, um, hold up. They say all maps are not accurate, but don't, didn't they have this all figured out? You should, you don't just they have, have the whole globe map, figured out? Yeah. They've distorted <laughs> every don't... single map, right? Every single map is going to be claimed to be from a spherical projection because we live on a globe according to the rhetoric. So therefore, you can't translate it onto a flat map without inaccuracies. That's what they're stating. Yeah. That's the other way yeah. around. It, you've well, taken you've every taken... map. If if you take that as true, every map must have a central focus point, and the distances must get greater the further you go away from that. Point. Uh, depends on the projection. Nah, I don't know. You can't project as. A... Well, you're describing an equidistant projection, so yeah, that's true in an equidistant projection, but that's not true for all projections. They're all different. But that's the point, isn't it? We've got many, we've got multiple projections of spheres on flat maps. And that, that's their excuse for saying it doesn't work because it's being translated to flat maps. As opposed but, to, we don't live on a sphere, it's obviously and observably flat. They're not going to say that. That's obviously not the religion of the day. So that's not going to be what they state. But they've got to have an excuse for why they don't work. Well, they don't work because they don't want you to see how the world's actually laid out. I thought that much if you're even here listening to this discussion that much should be bloody obvious by now but it doesn't often get talked about because it's it's taken as red and seemingly obvious to us uh, i'll just say hello to uh sleeping warrior then i'll shout out a quick, quick super chat hey doing sleeping warrior good to have you no sound I'll do the super chat shout out probably get interrupted as he figures out his sound shout out to unbelievable productions who's also in the panel Good to have you. It says Mark Taylor's kitchen goes kaboom. Okay, don't know what the reference is, but thank you very much indeed for the super <laughs> chat. Also, shout out to Cleary. What's the radius of the gravitational center? I don't know, Cleary. The presupposed center of the spherical Earth isn't really my forte, as it's not the stories that I've made up myself. So I can't really say I'm in authority when it comes to those things. I haven't authored that story. Can I um, just add? at that point that um isn't the vector meant to be a normal <laughs> um of that presupposed g that they're talking about it so that would be um the weight that a uh, plumb bob sort of shows which would be a vertical and that vertical is perpendicular to a horizontal so wouldn't that just say um perpendicular to a horizontal like you can't have perpendicular it, it, if you're a globe ed it's a dirty it, word well they wouldn't would necessarily mean that their r is um null and void right yeah <laughs> it would geometrically yeah. again r. they've lost the r yeah they don't have an r value anymore it's not reasonable to just dictate to us that we already know we're on a sphere therefore we can presuppose this r value and work forward from there because it's been debunked it's geometrically unstable you can't have an r value if you don't have a geometric horizon you need that to draw a tangent to to draw geometry as your mathematics well if you haven't got a geometric physical sphere edge for a horizon you, know, you can't do geometry you can't draw tangents that's the end of geometry for the globe it's game over r value That's that why Rumpus said yesterday many times, let's just imagine this. Let's just imagine this. Begging the question and living in Narnia, you can make anything. And that's what he was doing. And then he said that science doesn't prove things basically towards the end. And, but he spent the whole show trying to prove something. But, you, but the only way to prove it was to imagine it. Or did he? Was he doing the globe head trick of just disclosing that this is imagination? In other words, a few weeks back we were discussing the people who come to this subject and then think that they've got a, a right to be angry at some power that should not be and demand answers or get angry for giving them the lies that they've given them. However, 
as as you just disclaimed, Rumpus makes it clear that we're going to be imagining this stuff. And oh, no. if you look into it in the same way as we've looked into it, with their own sources, like George Musa, they lay it out for you. This is not on the really ears level. Now, with those words ringing in your ears, you can do one of two things. You can accept that this is just imagination land, that the heliocentric worldview of us spinning around a sphere is merely a philosophy. Or you can go, la, 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 gravity is real, it's a force. La, la, la. That's what you can do when your priest tells you. But at that point, it's on you. Not them. Now, when they educated you about the heliocentric <clears throat> model, had you have looked into what that meant, you'd have understood that it's merely a philosophy. We don't live on models. It's a reification fallacy. But at the point you choose to ignore that little detail that they did tell you, it becomes your responsibility your ignorance when you finally figure out that it was merely a philosophy that's nobody's fault but your own they told you let's imagine this model our model works our model's real when we're imagining it not on the really is level so don't get angry if you're new to this subject we're all stupid me included we're all fooled but on us, on me, on you. Not on them. Not on they. Because there is no they. They have told you. They made it clear it was just imagination land. It wasn't on the really is level. <laughs> Shout out to Bleeding Warrior. Sleeping Warrior buying likes and subs. Tut, tut, tut. Outrageous. Nathan, Thank can you, you hear me? The super chat. Hello. Hello. Get out of here um, with your buying subs and likes. I know what you're like with your like button wanting to be up higher nonsense. I, Get out of here. I liked the video last night, Tony. So. Don't like yeah. it. He's Nathan, buying them. He's buying the sleeping likes. Warrior. Nathan, can you hear Sleeping Warrior? <laughs> you I just what? want to um, share yeah, can, yeah. something that people are not familiar with at the minute, and we need to be aware of this. Um, you know, like when you see a wiring diagram for a plug, it says the brown wire goes to live. That doesn't mean that you can put the blue wire to live, does it? It means that you've got to put the brown wire to live. It doesn't mean that you can put the yellow and green wire to live. It means that you put the brown wire to live. Well, in the definition for perpendicular, it says specifically straight lines. Now, Rumpus yesterday made a big deal over whether or not lines could be curved. Now, by expression, if it says straight lines, it does mean straight lines. It doesn't mean... Um, curved lines and there's a latin phrase that we're not familiar with in this topic and i'm going to do my best to pronounce it but um, forgive me for butchering it but it says expressio unis es exclusio alterus and what it says is uh, <laughs> the mention of one thing is the exclusion of another so if it says brown wire it doesn't mean blue wire if it says brown wire it doesn't mean yellow and green when it says straight line it doesn't mean curved lines. So we're going to have to get familiar with this phrase. Expressio unis es exclusio alterus. It's Latin and it means if it says one thing, it doesn't mean something else. It means the one thing that it says. So that's a little bit of Latin that we've learned today. Expressio unis es exclusio alterus. Shout out to the new subs, the 200 new subs. Th thanks, Rude Earther. It's describing the law of identity. Saying yes. that if something has an exclusive description... Something else cannot have the same exclusive description. So things that are in polar opposition, one thing that is the antithesis of another cannot be the same thing. You know, it's describing mutual exclusivity. So I've paraphrased in about three other ways. Excellent. I'll live a bit of Latin. So Anthony, are you saying that when he put two circles overlaid on each other and the circles crossed each other at two points, he was trying to make an arc sound like yeah, a he's trying line. to make the point that a point is sufficient for a line, and it's not. A line is a, is a line and a point are not the same thing, in the same way that a straight line and a curved line are also not the straight thing. But he wants to conflate the two so that he can flick between um, Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry, and we're onto it. You can't. When it says the brown wire, it doesn't mean the blue wire can be used too. It just means the brown wire. So when it says straight lines, it doesn't mean curved lines. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to read out this next super chat, but I want you to do the opposite of what the super chat's requiring in the interest of generating more super chats, you understand. So, Bleeding Warrior, thank you very much indeed for the super chat. Feel free to keep donating to this channel. Sleeping Warrior, deny you bought subs and likes. Don't deny it, you'll hopefully super chat again. <laughs> Shout out to my new 200 subs, thanks Rudertha. 200 subs more? So what? What is your channel like moving forward in leaps and bounds, subscriber-wise at the moment? <laughs> no, I hot. think it's at the minute, any. I hot, think it's hot, 200 hot. subs. I don't think it's another 200, but it wouldn't surprise me. I haven't checked for days. But... You don't check your sub count? Man, I check no, my sub count. <laughs> I keep it I almost daily eye on my sub count and my stats and my views and my watch time and all the other possible stats that I can keep an eye on. But there we go. I know for a fact Sleeping Warrior doesn't. And he couldn't care less. But there we go. Obviously, that kind of person's going to go out of their way to buy subs and likes. That's just the kind yeah. of guy he is. <laughs> See, I'm more interested in learning a little bit of Latin. You know, like stopping rumpus from using the word curved lines instead of straight lines. But people that are more interested in sub counts, you know, super chat to, to tell people. Well, shout out to my new 200 subs. I know you'll only be here for a few more weeks while there's a purge due soon. But whilst you're here, it's lovely. Shout Thanks, Rude Earther. Just don't do that to me. No, that, nothing would piss me off more. Every intro I say, if you have not sub subscribed already, then subscribe. Because I don't want people to say, oh, I'd love Nathan to have a few more subscribers, therefore I'll, I'll subscribe with these other accounts. And people have offered and done this for me. I'm like, I just want genuine subscribers because it f messes up the stats. If you've got non-viewers subscribed to you, you don't want that. You want real statistics for them to be of any use to you. So for me, somebody adding a superfluous 200 subscribers to my channel would be a nightmare because it's like, well, what have I done? That's the th first thing I do. As soon as somebody, as soon as, if I grow overnight and I come in in the morning, I check my stats and I go, wow, I've grown by 50 subs. I'll search my own name because I want to know why I've grown 50 subs overnight. And typically... Somebody will have made a video about the channel or cut out a piece from the show or mentioned me in a positive way or something like that. When are you going to talk words, about Flat Earth? Say again. I said, when are you going to talk about Flat Earth? We are talking about Flat Earth. Good. You're talking about your fucking Mason. subs, Nathan. Sounds pretty pretty shut up. Oh, somebody sounds a little triggered. Oh, You're right there, buddy. A little bit robotic. Yeah, a bit <laughs> Somebody needs to share their opinion, oh, well, apparently. Please don't, don't want to kick you out. Please don't swear. You swear all the time, uh, Nathan. Don't ask you me to justify cunt. what I do, or I'll kick you out. This is my show. Aww. Just please don't please swear. Kick me out, you whiny little fucking cunt. Right, time for you kick to go. Kick him out! Bye-bye. <laughs> so Let me go get a little violin that? for you. Wow. <laughs> all this... Trigger! All this because he lost his R? Is this a response to losing your R? I think it might be Tony getting the wrong. Who, who was that? I don't that know. same guy that came in here yesterday and got tricked? Today we're not talking about Flat Earth when we're talking about Flat Earth debate and the stats and people coming along and trolling us by buying subs. This is all Flat Earth. Sorry if you don't like the fact that it's not directly associated with debunking or claiming something about Flat Earth specifically or Globe Earth specifically. This is the subject matter though. This is us as Flat Earthers making videos and getting people buying subs. What a crazy troll. Have you ever heard anything like it? It's ludicrous. But that's worthy of discussion. Why on earth would some random dick decide to buy Sleeping Warrior 200 subs just so they can super chat me. Oh, th thanks for the super chat, by the way. <laughs> I really appreciate the support, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Times are tough. It's anyway, so that they can moan at me for being horrible. Oh, he buys subs. Oh, there's another excuse to hate me. Oh, right. Okay, then. This is an absolutely fantastic marketing scheme you and Sleeping Warrior thought up two months ago. I, I applaud you for it. This is it. I, I was waiting for that. I didn't expect it to come from our own side. No, no, no. Nathan and Sleeping Warrior have conjured this up for publicity. <laughs> They're super chatting themselves. <laughs> no, it was Arwin. It was Arwin. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm such a beggar, you know. If you just donate to me. Then you can brag in my chat how I'm such a beggar for taking your money. Hey, this is my street up. corner, bitch. Don't beg here. <laughs> That's funny. No e-begging no. on my channel. 
Hit now the super chat, totally people. <laughs> now that we've been totally distracted, can we go back to the point? Um, straight lines can't be curved lines if they're described as straight. Otherwise, red, uh, what is it? Uh, brown wires can be plugged into blue wire holes because, you know, brown and blue don't make any difference. I'm just going right. to point out at this point that both Sleeping Warrior and myself are both colorblind, right? Now, I- I've I've trained in electronic servicing and I've worked with electronics and I've repaired electronics. I've also blown up quite a considerable amount of electronics because I've got the colours wrong in an amplifier when it's gone DC. I think I think you fixed it. You've just got one colour wrong because you can't see the damn thing if you're colour blind, which I am. And I know Sleeping Warrior is the same. So he's talking about wiring up plugs, probably in the back of his mind chuckling that he's blown something up at some stage. Wiring it up <laughs> yeah. wrong. Of course. But it's important, though, because, I mean, I can't emphasise it enough. They need to use bendy lines. Well, when it when Perpendicular expressly states that it's got to be a straight line, that doesn't include bendy lines, because otherwise it would just say line, but it specifically says straight lines. Well, that's the antithesis of curved lines. So let's stick with straight lines. Let's stick with Euclidean geometry, please, because that's the real world. <sighs> That sounds but, like a, a rumpus line. But it can yeah. work in circumdicular just geometry. That sounds like a piece of rumpus dialogue, though, doesn't it? So, lines can curve. Yeah, lines can curve. That's right. But straight lines aren't curved. Go on, Alvin. Say something. Make my day. Are curved? Are curve? They are always curved based on R. Are they? Yes. In circumdicular geometry, they are. Circumdicular? No, guys, don't, don't no make me. Alwyn, you've got the wrong phrase. It's Rumpolian geometry. Guys, no. don't make me pull no, I'm going for circumdicular uh, geometry. Paul's trying to get a joke in. Can you let him? The guys, don't make me pull up math as fun in their definition of what a straight line is. Just don't make them. No. <laughs> right, I'm going to do a quick shout out to one of my patrons. So, big shout out to Dick Earth Skeptic. Also, stay tuned if you are watching on the Nathan Oakley Premiering stream, as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, though, if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley 1980 live stream, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive and serious thank you to all of you who did smash the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on the Nathan Oakley Premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video.